Your introverted nature is not a limitation. It's a unique advantage that sets you apart in the world of business. And that's a quote by my guest. It's her third time on the show, Tanya Goodall-Smith. So before we get started, I want to invite you, implore you to check me out on YouTube and subscribe. You know, it's free to subscribe. You don't have to pay anything and your favorite podcast platform. And that's free also. Why am I suggesting you do that? A, because it helps other people see the show. And it also helps encourage me to keep doing this because you know, it's like notes in a bottle. And I love to know that people are finding me and valuing the show and all the wisdom of my guests. So thank you in advance for doing this. So my guest today, Miss Tanya, is the author. And this is part of why I said, hey, let's get on the show again. She just released her best-selling book, The Introvert's Guide to Personal Branding, How to Put Yourself Out There Without Changing Who You Are. She is the founder of Work Story Creative, which is an agency that helps introverts. And I'm sure you'll say yes to an yes. extra <laughs> or omnibird, whatever we call people like me, who are evolving their business to create an elevated brand and bring it to life. She had a 20-year career in the fashion industry, has had design jobs internationally, like Hewlett Packard, Disney, and guests. Wow. Um, and she's been on the board of the National Association of Women Business Owners and lots of other good things. She's done everything. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome, Miss Tanya. Thank you. Thank you. So she's up in Spokane, Washington, and I'm here in the blazing hot San Diego, which most people think it's always 72 here, but not this week. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Before we get started, I want to tell you a little story about how branding is powerful. So um, a while ago, Tanya sent me a little gift package with some fun things uh, with her hot pink, although now people are thinking of it almost as Barbie pink, but <laughs> it, it's a little more subtle than that, uh, but hot pink and black. Okay, so about a month ago, I was wearing hot pink shorts and a black shirt, and I was sitting in a chair and I looked down and I thought of Tanya <laughs> <laughs> and thought, oh, she's got that book. Let's get her on the show. So I'd say that's a pretty good example of the power of branding. What do you have to say about that? Yeah, yeah and color specifically in branding is super powerful and an easy way to create recognition. Uh, I think it's often um, underutilized, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and, and hard. Like I, I get a question a lot from people like, what color should I have on my website? I'm like, well, you need to get your branding dialed in. And there's a specific reasons why you should choose specific colors and shades and of colors and stuff like that. So, um, so yeah, color is really powerful, powerful in branding for sure. So why does the, the bright pink, and black, black, sorry, speak properly, Lucy. <laughs> it's, it's hot. Uh, why do those fit you? What do they communicate? Sure. Yeah. So I wanted to work with businesses. I knew that. So traditionally people might go with blue or gray, you know, um, but I help people creatively and I primarily work with women so we went with the hot pink uh, to really stand out. Uh, it can communicate um, like the creativity side, also connection and um, femininity and high energy. You know, it's not a soft pink, it's a hot pink. Right. And um, even though I am an introvert and I tend to have lower energy, I wanna bring that higher energy vibe to my work and my clients. And, um, so that's why I picked hot pink and it's paid off really well. Yeah. I hear that a lot from people yeah. like, Oh, I saw this thing. And I thought it was your brand. <laughs> right, it was right. black. It's powerful. <laughs> and I, I think of you as high energy, but maybe more in the sense of effectiveness, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, not like 
oh hey here i am on stage right right <laughs> yeah but, but a, a powerful energy um yeah. my colors uh well i've changed it with the profitable photographer my photography colors are like a dusty lavender and a peachy pink kind of flesh tone and a taupe because i wanted first of all i'm kind of lower energy and soft and children and women were my target or women with children <laughs> and um the the flow my font all of that um just really fits th that and it's worked for me and when I rebranded immediately most of the people that called me that's been, back when uh, I'm too hot to be thinking here. <laughs> okay, back when I had an ad in the Yellow Pages and a monthly freebie magazine for parents, back when I could get work from that. And what I found was instantly, the people that called me, most of them were already on board and assuming I was expensive and worth it. So mm -hmm. I saw that it was like that. I saw yep. the change in that. And um, okay, so we want to dive into your book, and <laughs> Danny, I have ten talking points. So, awesome. <laughs> if, we, if we have to split this in two, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> okay. So, explain to me, slash, define what makes someone an introvert. Sure. So, introvert, extrovert is kind of on a scale, and it's defined by how you derive and lose your energy basically that's the the basic um de definition of it i can't remember the name of the psychologist that kind of coined it and defined it but um a lot of people think introverts are shy or don't like people or whatever but that's not necessarily true we just tend to lose our energy from being around a lot of people for a long time and need to recharge by being alone or in small groups and extroverts gain energy by being around a lot of people so you know, they, they kind of derive energy from the group collective energy. And then if they're left alone too long, they can get sad and <laughs> depressed or, you know, lo just lose their energy. They need to seek out some people, right. go to a restaurant or a party or, you know, hang out with their friends. They, they tend to be more social in right. that way. Uh, so that's the primary difference. And most people are somewhere in the middle or, you know, they tend to kind of in different situations be both right oh. like mm -hmm. it's very rare to be totally on one side or the other but I think most people can kind of identify with one or the other you know just looking at how they gain their energy or prefer to spend their time you know mm -hmm. like to stay alone and color pictures or read <laughs> a lot more than than go to parties then you're probably more introverted yes I I guess I'm somewhere not like in the middle of it, but mm -hmm. there's so many things that are me in different ways. I think um, the COVID shutdown allowed my introverted side to have a little bit more dominance, right. which is why doing a podcast is a lot more comfortable for me than doing platform speaking. Mm -hmm. I thought I wanted to get out, you know, travel. This is pre-COVID. Right. Um, really work on getting gigs where I could talk about my my yeah. sales system and you know get out there in the world and I would have hesitance. But mm -hmm. when the idea of a podcast came up, it was like, oh, yeah, yeah. right, me <laughs> you too. Do that, but yeah. Like, uh, there's something you mentioned in the book that that really resonated with me that it took me a couple of years to be willing to post the YouTube video because mm -hmm. of my insecurities about how I look. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, a lot of things rang true. And at the same time, I thrive in, you know, like I love conventions and I love right. to do things, but I have to have my own room. I could right. not share yeah. to yeah. save money. So. Right you need to recharge right yeah and I've heard people say like they're surprised I'm an introvert because when I do show up in person 
you know, I'm talking to people, I'm connecting, but when I get home, I, I got to take a rest the next day because <laughs> yeah. it really takes a lot of effort yeah. for me to show up in that way. Yeah. So, but yeah, I've, I've heard people get more introverted as they get older too. You know, they're like just more comfortable spending time alone. Mm-hmm. You know, don't feel that need as much anymore. Right. Uh, so yeah. So I think it's possible to change a little bit and, or go up and down the spectrum or, you yeah. know, whatever. So, yeah, I'm, um, I have a really nice front porch and I love sitting on my porch and meeting the babies and doggies and and their parents that are walking by and I've rumor has it all the dogs in the neighborhood I'm their fav- favorite house to <laughs> stop at um so that's my extrovert but then in the afternoon I grab my book and I sit in my chair and I read for a while so it, I I think that somebody saying oh I can't read this book or give value because I'm not an introvert or I'm going to, but am I, you know, what am I, do you think it matters how we do? No. I mean, in fact, I've had several extroverts read this book, just my family members or people testing it or, or whatever. And they're like, I learned so much about personal branding from this. It didn't matter that yeah. they're an extrovert. Like most of the advice in there is personal branding advice. I just offer extra tips for me as an introvert building my personal brand. Here's what I did to overcome, you know, my fear of of going to network events or my struggles with phone calls or, uh, you know, the, a lot of people, I don't have a problem getting on video on social media, but a lot of introverts I hear from, they're like, I don't want to be in a video on social media or don't want to do social media at all. For me, I love social media because I'm not having to show up in a room full of people to connect. So, um, you know, so I give some tips on some of those things, but really it's a personal branding book. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, yeah. But the first part, it has so like the first third has so many eye opening things that like, um, I don't know if I have social anxiety, but I get anxious about certain things. So, um, I don't, I don't think I need to define myself as strongly as just there, there's so much wisdom in that. Um, I'm guessing you read the book quiet. Did you read the book quiet? Yeah. Um, I admit I skimmed it. <laughs> okay. It's, it blew my mind and yeah. I recommend to everybody you read that book and not skim it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you I- probably know most, most of what's in there. But what I loved, because as a business coach, uh, over half of my coaching clients have been socially anxious or more introverted. And the the bottom line that I know you share a lot of this wisdom without having to like underline and take a test on that book <laughs> right. <laughs> is that there are superpowers and that actually in our world there can be advantages to mm-hmm. being um like I think of extroverted if we're going extremes as the extrovert craves attention and to be seen as amazing mm. you know joke teller right uh, powerful speaker cult leaders (laughs) right (laughs) um you know like my daddy was a pastor and he's an introvert Mm -hmm. i don't know in heaven if he's an introvert but he's (laughs) an introvert but we had all these extra extrovert family friends that were pastors that had these big personalities Mm -hmm. so i think clients that are drawn to someone like that it's an admiration Whereas an introvert is more interested in you and a better listener and right. makes makes the other person feel good about themselves. Do you, other thoughts on that? Do you agree with that? Yeah, for sure. I definitely feel that's my strength, you know, just really making a one-on-one connection with people, um, really seeing them, listening. You know, I my clients all the time are like, wow, like you really got me when I'm designing their branding and stuff. Um, you know, I presented to them and like, I didn't really know what I wanted, but until you showed it to me and you totally got me. Mm-hmm. And I think that's, you know, I mean, you don't have to be an, an introvert to have that quality, 
but I feel like that has, you know, I've honed that through the years just from being a listener and an observer. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, when I first started offering photography, a business coach told me like, you're probably going to struggle because you aren't really flamboyant and out there. And so I kind of worried about that, but I found that not to be the case, like, you know, connecting with people, really ma- helping them feel comfortable is a major strength as a photographer. Uh, you know, I'm not doing weddings. Maybe that helps when you're corralling a bunch of people. I, that's why I don't like to do it. <laughs> it's a bunch of people <laughs> everywhere. Right. Um, so, you know, maybe it helps to be more extroverted as a wedding photographer, but I found, you know, working one on one with people or in small teams uh, at offices, I haven't had any issues. So yeah. I, th- I think weddings, uh, the, the person that is more observant rather than has the energy where they're observed, yeah. it can be an advantage there mm-hmm. too, because you're, you're watching what's going on yeah, and, right. and connecting and there's skills mm-hmm. that you can learn how to be more directive mm-hmm. without, um, you know, without being like the orchestra conductor or, yeah, right, or right. circus yeah uh, master whatever it's called master yeah, of the circus. Right. yeah yeah and that's one of the points of the book that you can learn skills you know that's what I've done through the years to mm-hmm. to enhance what I've already got <laughs> and also you can choose right you don't have to do all the things that extroverts might use to their advantage right. we just don't have to do them we got we got other things we can do yeah. to stand out so and there's some people who choose to photograph equipment or jewelry or something where you don't with the bulk of the actual creative work you are not distracted by other people Mm -hmm. but you still need people skills to get the job (laughs) yes let's see so let's dive a little deeper if there's anything else you have to say about the superpowers and so I like this quote from your book, introverts are often more independent because they enjoy being alone for extended periods and tend to be intrinsically motivated. Uh So tell me more about that and all of it. (laughs) I've been self-employed for over 20 years working from home, basically, right? Um, And before COVID, I feel like it was really hard to get a job working from home. Like, you know, people want you in the office, they want to monitor you, they want to make sure you're getting stuff done. But I've always been very, you know, I get stuff done by the deadline. I, I'm motivated to do it. I don't have to have someone breathing down my neck to make sure I'm getting stuff done. So that is what I'm saying is intrinsically motivated, right? Like, I'm going to do this thing, and I'm going to get it done. On time. <laughs> yeah. um, so that tends to be a quality, you know, we tend to be super focused, not easily distracted in that way. Um, and so, yeah, I feel like that's a strength for sure mm-hmm. for introverts. We can, you know, we don't have to be monitored or take a break at the water cooler. <laughs> right. Just chat with people, right? So. <laughs> yeah. Go out on the porch and pet some dogs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I sometimes would be amazed when I had big editing jobs to do okay. that I just quietly sat at the computer. Um, sometimes music helps. Sometimes it just clutters me, but just sitting quietly, editing, retouching, sorting, doing all the things and, you know, look up and I've been sitting for four hours and, you know, I'm, I'm fine. Um, so yeah so do you know much about the and this was covered in the book quiet about highly sensitive people hsp and how that can what yeah can you explain what that is and how it might connect yeah so highly sensitive people i guess a lot of times introverts tend to also be highly sensitive people like they can tend to go together Mm -hmm. um and i feel like like i haven't really dived a lot into that, but I feel like I'm definitely more of a sensitive person. <laughs> uh, I can't have lots of music and the TV and, you know, going, um, concerts are hard for me when it's super loud. Um, even the networking events, right? Like I just, I get some anxiety from so much noise and so many people. 
Um, and then we can also tend to be really empathetic with other people, like really feel their emotions. And so oftentimes um, introverts have those same qualities, but not necessarily, right? Like it goes back to just how you derive your energy. And I think that's a quality of the highly sensitive people too, right? Mm -hmm. can have really zapped energy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or, or boost it depending on the situation. Yeah. Feel, yeah. Filling the energy around you and taking it yeah. in. Yeah. Um, what, what, um, is mentioned in the book is that it's actually some, sometimes people will think HSP people and I'm big time. When I learned about that 20 plus years ago, it was a complete revelation mm -hmm. that it's like 15% of us, it's almost like our skin is thinner, yeah. more nerve endings. Right. Um, and so we're sensitive in ways that, like, I think that's one of the reasons I'm a successful coach is because I'm feeling what they're feeling, which is an empath. Um, and I think quieter, more introverted people potentially have that. Um, I know this isn't all about me. I'm just using it as an example. <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> um, but let's see, where was I going before I interrupted myself? Um, I don't know. I'll come back to it or I won't. Okay. Oh, that it almost is like a condition like um, someone being on the spectrum. Mm -hmm. It can show up like that sometimes, right. but it's not. The author explains that it's coming from a different place, mm -hmm. but it's as genuine as any other, like all my life, people were just like, just get over it. And right, right. Stop being so sensitive, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, all the time. Right? Yeah. All the time. <laughs> Even I sit with my door open in my living room and the street is not far away. And there's a guy that was working on a house across the street and he parked his car in front of my house because there's shade. And at lunch, he would sit in his car and turn on a podcast way too loud for me <laughs> and I had to go outside and ask him to park somewhere else or right. turn it down uh because I couldn't concentrate on what I was doing and some people would think that was super rude and right. maybe it is but I'm about self-care at this point yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah okay so let's see what's my next so so the real superpower if you could say it in like a sentence and maybe you already have but I just want to make sure people understand what the superpower is super clearly oh, okay well there's several let's see how do I distill it down into one well I think for sure that making connections right making individual connections uh researching is another one like really thinking uh -huh. things out you know before we make a decision or a lot of people think introverts aren't good speakers but I think we can be because we thoroughly prepare uh, mm -hmm. you know, um, can make the client process really great because we've thought things out in advance, like what would make this person feel really comfortable and seen and valued. Um, so those are th three of the main ones I would say. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, I, I just think encouraging people to realize that their nature is not as like a wall that says you mm -hmm. can't do this, but yeah. that right. you take who you are. <clears throat> and it, it just like people that are extremely extroverted they can learn to be more uh of a listener and empathetic and right, right. connect and focus on the other rather than themselves and right. so it's not like a a scent like a i wouldn't say death sentence but like you're this so that means you can't yep. do this no it's just acknowledging and noticing what works and then some skills we need to learn. Like yeah. if you're a speaker, how do you initiate that first, hello, here I am. You know, how yeah. do you start a talk that gets people's attention? You know, that's a skill. Right, uh, yes. Um, let's see, you mentioned something about camera demons. Um, <laughs> so tell me what a camera demon is. So I think a lot of people they don't want to be in front of the camera, right? I mean, most people, you don't have to be 
necessarily an introvert, right? A lot of people, we just don't like how we look or whatever, but for an introvert specifically, just don't want to put yourself out there, right? We sometimes pretend to be in the shadows, um, observing, uh, a little more self-conscious, especially for video. I think as for photography, right? Like you can hire a good photographer that's going to make you look good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but it's a still, right? You're not having to speak. You're not having to come up with something to say and, um, and make those connections with people. And so in the book, I outline some things you can do to overcome those and to protect your energy, like batch creating, that kind of thing. Um, a lot of what I mentioned in the first part is um, your mindset, right? So once you can get your mindset into um, thinking about how am I serving people, right? What's my mission? Um, that kind of thing that, that can help you overcome a lot of your insecurities, about getting on camera because you want to help people. You want to, mm -hmm. you want to make money right? Like, or both. Uh, so having that motivation can help you overcome some of those issues. I love that. I love that. Um, what, what I hear you saying in that last part is when we learn to focus outward mm -hmm. like, rather than oh my gosh, I'm not good enough. Uh, like, let's say uh, here we are having a conversation. If both of us were just like, oh, I am too shy to be, you know, putting myself right. out there, then we're not giving of ourselves to the other. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that part of why you wrote your book, you said yes to being on this show is because in spite of what might be uncomfortable for you, uh, cause I'm assuming, you know, it's not all like, yeah, I got <laughs> <this covered." laughs> is that you care about the person that you're going to benefit. Yeah, for sure. When in doubt, think about the contribution rather than like our own little selves. How am I going to be perceived yeah. and such? Right, right. And the thinking too about, you know, who has added value to my life, I didn't go listen to them because of how they looked. <laughs> right. Like right. They, they offered me value in what they they put out there. And um I didn't care how they looked or how it sounded or whatever, you know. Right. Um so you can apply that to yourself. Like probably nobody really cares about those little things that we worry about <laughs> mm -hmm. for ourselves, you know, and what do they want that we can give them for sure. Right. right. Um, also remember you mentioned one of the big fears is fear of criticism when we put ourselves out there. Do you have um, a little more that you can sure. say about that and maybe how to overcome that? Yeah. So coming down to the mindset again, right? Like probably there's always going to be people who don't like you. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, you know, who are going to have negative things to say. Um, and just remembering that, you know, maybe they're not the person that needed what you had to say or, or that got something out of it. Um, and then I also just think with practice and learning some of these skills, you get better, mm -hmm. right? Um, like with photography, <laughs> none of us started out producing amazing photos. Um, if we never would have started and been open to criticism or been open to just having bad photos. <laughs> For a while, we never would have gotten better. So just keeping that in mind, you know, when you start doing live videos or speaking or whatever you decide to do to build your personal brand, it's probably going to be bad <laughs> or you know, at least not amazing. And you, you'll you probably have criticism of yourself, which can be good, right? Criticism helps us grow and improve. So again, just coming down back to your mission. Why are you doing this and mm -hmm. finding yourself? Yeah, that self-criticism um for me has been a big roadblock I had to heal mm -hmm. in order to let my light shine right. in this coaching. You know, for me, uh, I was co confident in my photography. I, you know, wasn't really hard on myself with that, but in putting like just words out and right. showing up and being present, uh, I had um, one of my mentors, Jesh the Rocks, if anybody knows him, he's amazing. And he offers with his students like a 20 minute um, kind of, I guess you'd sort of call it a coaching 
session, but it's like a deep dive into who you are. And he said, and this goes back like 12 years, you are going to do the kinds of things I'm doing, but there's one roadblock. You've done all the work in your life, but there's one thing in the way. And once you figure that out and get rid of it, then it's going to be like the dam breaks mm -hmm. and you can do this. And I realized it was that fear of criticism from myself yeah. and others. And then it would just take me down to the depths, down mm -hmm. to like all the way down. And I did a lot of work on that. And the the breaking point was when I realized if someone is critical of me, we both need some love. Mm. And so I imagine putting my arms around them and comforting them, you know, just an internal thing and doing the same for myself and comforting myself about how uncomfortable this is. And then I just grew out of it. So well, that's that's one of so my fun. little yeah little tips. I, I think for photographers, especially building your personal brand is so uncomfortable because we're so used to creating something of other people, right? Like our photos right. are of other <laughs> we're, right. we're creating something for them it shows them and so to show up in that way like forward facing can feel really hard and I think that fear of criticism for sure is at the root of it a lot of the time mm -hmm. so let's talk more about branding because I know your book uh, and your superpower <laughs> is branding and it, it's a word thrown around a lot has been for a while I love the fact that the personal branding now has become a photographic specialty mm -hmm. where there can be really great money in in helping people have photographs of themselves that can sell them especially to speakers, authors, you know, um, mentors, and coaches and things like that to, uh, you know, because they're playing in a different world than maybe a realtor that just yeah. needs or thinks the only thing they need is a headshot. Right. But then there's the deep world of branding that is about the communication in all aspects. Mm -hmm. um, I should let you share that, but you have more on that. So let's talk about what sure. is branding? Yeah. So branding is a reputation, right? Whether it's for a corporation or a person and personal branding, they say <laughs> everyone mm -hmm. should have one. If you're in business, even if you work for a work for a business or you're a CEO, like, um, you know, a lot of CEOs now of companies have their own personal brand, uh, and the company, you know, that enriches the company. It mm -hmm. also creates opportunities for you as a professional if you wanted to move on, right? Like someone else seeking you out for a better opportunity or you want to sell your own books and do your own speaking or whatever. Um, so that as a photographer, you're the face of your brand. You're the person that people are interacting with and that, you know, you're going to be spending time with them. So building your personal brand is, is your reputation and people get to know you that way. They like you, they trust you, maybe like Maybe you love dogs and they love dogs or you're into hiking and they're into hiking. So they feel a connection with you that way. And um, it really just is a way to, to sell, mm -hmm. <laughs> to sell yourself and to be remembered and to stand out from the, all the other photographers. Right. Um, what was the question? I guess, what is branding? No, it's not, so it's not just a logo. Yeah. It's not just a logo. In fact, <laughs> I love personal branding photography because like, even though I design logos, I tell people for your personal brand, your photos are more important than a logo. Mm. We don't think like when we think of Oprah, we don't think of the Oprah logo. We think of her face, uh, you know, and that's a personal brand. So if you, you know, if you only have a certain budget or whatever, invest in personal branding photography before a logo. <laughs> that's mm. my advice, even though, you know, it probably is not great for my business. <laughs> Although I do brand <laughs> photography too. So come do your photos and then we can do your logo later. <laughs> right, right. Uh, but yeah, I think the photos are more important. Like it's your face. That's your personal brand. Mm -hmm. um, I think that historically, a lot of people have thought that 
what you want to do is figure out who your client is and then create a logo, photos, colors, website that they'll be attracted to. Mm -hmm. And so I saw in the 80s and 90s, there was a lot of gold and black. Mm -hmm. And um, the, a little before that, there was sort of cowboy rustic. It was mostly men in the industry. So mm -hmm. imagine men trying to guess what a woman who's their client is going to be drawn to. Right. And then people like Lori Nordstrom comes along. Do you know who she is? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she's her, I just think of everything as black and white with her and really classic, you know, her font, great last name because Nordstrom is its own brand and it's so different right. than what I saw with the dudes and not all the dudes. Yeah. People, people who like David Peters, I think of him because I think of people and their logos and their colors a mm -hmm. lot. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was his signature. Yeah. Um, We're just kind of gone. And he that? is a very classy kind of mm -hmm. guy. So, so the luxury of what we might think of luxury fits him. But if, if you like, sometimes I have people look at perfume bottles to be able to think about, oh, the whole, like the shape of the packaging, the the font, how the font is done, the textures, the, and, and it makes you think it's going to smell a certain way. Right, right. And, yeah, you know, does yeah, so the, the branding is a vibe, right? It's not just, yeah. here's my logo, here's my brand. It's an overall package, like you said. And it communicates something. So, you know, is it masculine? Is it feminine? Is it somewhere in the middle? You know, it, it could be neither. Um, like you said, I, I think this perfume's going to smell feminine because of the way it looks, right? right. Or whatever. Um, and so it is a total package. And in my book, I structured the chapters in a way that puts, so I have strategy and then identity and then marketing or sales and promotion. So I did that on purpose. Um, uh, because most people start with sales and promotion, right? Like they have this thing, I'm going to sell it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then eventually they're like, oh, okay, maybe I need to have some kind of brand identity. So they'll go be like, I need a logo. And then when they get to a certain point, they're like, wait a minute, I'm not really sure who my audience is. Like I really need to define some things. And so you're going to have a lot more success. I think <laughs> if you go the opposite, right, you start with the strategy that's where we got to decide, you know, what should the vibe of this brand be? What, what kind of reputation do we have? Then you create all the visual assets that are going to communicate that and then use those to, to promote and sell your offer. But, you know, we don't have a business if we're not selling anything. So I think that's why a lot of people do the opposite, right? Which, which is okay. You know, I think once you get to a certain point in your business, you are making money, you're selling stuff. Um, most of my clients come to me at that point where they're like, okay, I got to take it to the next level. Uh, my messaging is confusing, you know, that kind of thing. And that's when we do a full brand for them and start with that strategy piece of, you know, what kind of reputation do we want to create and what kind of client do we want to attract? So what I hear you saying is when people are starting, they don't need to, and it may not be that wise or you may not be ready for a five or 10,000 or 50,000, whatever right. branding package, get going on the work and who you are, who your clients are, learn to sell, learn to market. And then when you're having success where you can afford at whatever level you, you can comfortably afford a professional branding strategist that's the time to invest in my Yeah, especially for a photographer, right? Like, I mean, unless you are super clear, like I definitely know I want to do weddings. I know the the neighborhood that I want to target. <laughs> and I have $10,000 to spend on my branding because I, you know, I have that from some, you know, from your other job or that you saved up or an investor or whatever, then totally, you know, do it right the first time. But um, from what I see for most solopreneurs starting out, um, most people do it the other way and that's, and it's totally fine. <laughs> yeah. In fact, it could, like you said, it could be a mistake to invest all this. And then, you know, a year or two in, you're like, wait a minute, 
I really want to work with these other people. <laughs> right. Instead, right. Or I'm, I'm only getting this type of client and not the other one. So um, although your branding can affect that for sure, uh, who you're, who you're attracting and who's yeah. buying and at what price point and that kind of stuff. Yeah. So. so what I hear in that is that there's like an evolution in our businesses. And if we're not absolutely certain, we can get ourselves branded in a certain direction and realize, oh, this isn't what I want, or I'm, I love this other thing, or I'm not attracting the people I want to work with. Okay. Yeah. I'm thinking yeah. of, um, so another person that came on the scene about the same time as Lori Nordstrom was Sarah Petty. Mm -hmm. Sarah was a graphic designer or some kind of super designer before she started. So her first year, she got like the most beautiful logo, branding, packaging, folders. Um, was there websites back then? Barely, but websites, you know, like everything was top because right. she had the skill to do that. And that launched her very quickly into, in, I think she was in Walnut Creek, which is a pretty expensive neighborhood. Yeah, so she right. showed up immediately as if she was highly mm -hmm. skilled and she just started photography not long before, but she came up with photographs that were definitely sellable, but she created that luxury, but fun because Sarah's right. fun and everything. I still think of the copper color. She's a mm -hmm. redhead. Mm -hmm. Her book is called Worth Every Penny, which, you know, it's all connected. So if people have the skill or like you just said, yeah. have the money right. to present ourselves with a big splash, it, yeah. it doesn't hurt. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, that shows the power of branding, right? Like, so like we have either time or money <laughs> to give depending on how fast you want to go uh, and grow. So that yeah. is, yeah. And she had that knowledge and probably really thought out that yeah. strategy first, right? Yes. She did it in the right way to really grow quickly. Yeah. And she got on the speaker speaker circuit and because she had this clarity, you know, I can still picture uh, all the things that the little handouts and things. And so that got that focus very powerfully, very quickly. I, I know other people, there was a San Diego photographer that just boom, showed up with everything in place. And he'd been in other businesses long enough that he knew he could manage this, but he never went through the step-by-step. Right. Step. He just out of the gate, hit the hit it running. But yeah, I regret, first of all, I didn't know there were people like you around that specialized in branding. So I hired and fired four graphic artists <laughs> <laughs> over like two years trying right. to get this new logo because they were people who knew how to make a logo. Yeah. And they were not pulling from me. Uh, you know, it was more surfacy. Right, right. And yeah. then I went to a workshop. I can't remember her name, but she talked about the power of branding and she offered a half an hour evaluation and she was just like, boom, 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 boom. Oh, she gets me. Yeah. So then I began looking for someone more in my price point and like what you do uh, immediately, you know, I, I spent years trying to find a font <laughs> <laughs> and she does these three logos and they're like, any one of them is perfect. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So yeah, there's a difference between a graphic designer, you know, who could take all the information you give them and do it a logo versus a branding strategist who draws out all the things they need right because you don't know you don't really know necessarily how to write a creative brief on or you don't necessarily know what things they need to know or sometimes you don't even know like your target audience yet right like I can help people figure that out define it um also yeah kind of that vibe that we want you know some people don't know they they know when they see it like I said before that it's them but they don't really know how to describe it or um define it a lot of times so right. that's a, a branding strategy right. can help or um because i went through a lot of people on the internet 
that were part of different different groups and i found somebody locally that had examples of her work that fit my the mm -hmm. word of the year is vibe <laughs> <laughs> Um, because there were a lot that were excellent, but they were all very masculine, very, you know, corporate looking. Right. And I found a woman that she had been a graphic artist for architects mm. and had a, a really interesting creative background. That, so finding people that also are finding someone that can um, get us. Yeah. Right. By looking at the things they've done before yeah, their portfolio for sure yeah so um i'm gonna pause one sec because i have a question for you that i don't need to ask you right here because yeah anyway i'm gonna pause a sec hold on okay. everybody all right i got the answer to my question and i have two questions for you uh because the clock on the wall is saying that's about all <laughs> So number one, how do we get in touch with you? And I know you have uh, a free gift that you would love for people to log in and grab. So tell me sure. about that. Yeah. So if you are feeling confused about your branding or, you know, not attracting the right people, or you just have a question for me, <laughs> mm -hmm. I just go to my website, workstorycreative.com and all my contact information is there, depending on how you want to contact me. Um, and then if you want to download the first chapter of my book for free, that is at workstorycreative.com forward slash free chapter. So you can get a little peek in there about what it's, what it's about, see if you want to buy it. And then it's on Amazon. So you can just search for it there if you want to buy it. And um, yeah, you feel free to, to email me or whatever, if you have any questions or just want to connect. I love to connect with photographers on Facebook. You can also search for me there. So awesome. And uh, I read her book. I will admit I skimmed a little because I was <laughs> running out of time. Um, and there, there's so much good stuff in there. So highly recommend you get the whole book, but at least get started with that freebie. So as people who listen regularly know, I want to ask you, either your parting thoughts or is there something that when we say goodbye to each other you think oh I wish I had mentioned this so the floor is yours okay let's see here <laughs> uh I mean I guess the the biggest takeaway and the reason I wrote the book was to um yeah let the introverts know <laughs> uh huh you know, that you have superpowers and you can build your personal brand and don't have to be afraid or you can fill the fear and do it anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's more realistic advice. And then just for everyone, I feel like I really break down the process of building your personal brand, giving you steps for doing each thing. You don't have to do all the things, but giving you options for putting yourself out there. And I hope it's, I've made it really easy for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> to yeah. take it to the next level, right? Or assess where you are and and take one one step forward um and really be brave and cuz I think it's it's really going to help your photography business if you can be more genuine, be more yourself, mm -hmm. be more visible, you know, getting out into the community and that's really going to help your business. Thank you so much for saying yes and I'm so glad I had my pink shorts and my <laughs> They're, they're kind of like um, bike shorts and and my top kind of mm -hmm. has ruffles on the bottom and pink and black. Tan. Yeah. Well, thanks for inviting me to come on. I've always enjoyed our conversation. So I was happy to come on again. And right. thanks for talking about my book. You're welcome. It's well worth the read. <laughs> and everyone stay tuned for my little quickie wrap up. So bye for now, Miss Ta Tanya. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Hello again, lovelies. I said goodbye to Miss Tanya, and now I just want to do a little quick wrap up as usual. So the main thing that we talked about was how being an introvert can, or have some introvert tendencies, can actually be positive, can be used 
to our advantage and that, well, some people you think are extroverts. If you learn more about them, you're going to find, no, they actually are introverts who have learned to overcome some of the challenges and use the gifts or the superpowers to become the success that they are. Lots of of um, stars like um, Barbara Streisand, I think, I don't know if she actually throws up before a live performance, but she definitely is not comfortable until she gets going. So being an introvert is a blessing if we look at it the right way. And that yes, we can be successful and in some ways, be more successful than than uh, our more extroverted people. Now I'm I'm probably 50 50 and some sh different shades of gray. So I don't know what I call myself right now, but I have tendencies towards that. So anyway, um, what else? We talked about the fear of being criticized, being on live video. And she mentioned that if we focus on the value we're bringing rather than what others think about us, that that can make it much easier to just get ourselves out there. <laughs> if you've watched this, uh, you know, I'm always worried about how my bangs look, <laughs> but I've had to get over that. So let's see. Um, so her biggest takeaway, which you just heard, is that we can feel the fear and do it anyway. And big thing is the value of personal branding and how that can kind of present us to the world in a way that if you are nervous about that because you're a little more on the introvert side, it takes the place of a lot of like, get the bullhorn and shout from the rooftops. So thanks for tuning in again. Thanks for subscribing on YouTube and any of your favorite social media or podcast platforms, making comments, letting me know you're hearing me and what you value about this interview and others. It's greatly appreciated. LucyDumasCoaching.com is where you can connect with me. All right. That's all. Bye for now.